you say no. All right, welcome back. You're still watching News Up. Um, quickly to our first discussion. It is no longer news that um, there have been some resolutions taken in recent times by government in terms of relief materials. Uh, but then the, the, big, the, big, the big question right now is um, the challenge of distributing uh, these materials. The complaints are everywhere. Uh, um, quite a large number of Nigerians are, have showed um, displeasure at... Um, what they, th they say they're getting from government. Uh, but we also understand that there, there are a, a, a few challenges that um, uh, this initiative could face, and that will be the focus of uh, this conversation as we speak. We have Sumbo Oladipo, a development consultant. Uh, she's going to be talking to us via Skype. Sumbo, um, uh, good morning, Sumbo, if you're there. Good morning. Yes, yeah, so good to have you join us on the show again. Yes, it's going to be another 14 days of um, lockdown, as instructed by the president. Uh, you have some information that we don't have in, in line with um, the relief materials. The complaints are, uh, are they're not good. Uh, it's, it's everywhere. Uh, you want to bring us up to speed as to uh, how well we have done. Let's start with how well we have done in distribution of relief materials. Well, um and the feedback that we have been getting uh, from various uh, people uh, across the country, uh, we have not done so very well with it, with the distribution, because uh, there are quite a number of people who, have, who are yet to receive anything, especially this group that we term the vulnerable, the poorest of the poor. And so I think that government needs to go back to the drawing uh, board and see how they can make it, uh, the distribution more effective. Uh, for instance, I'll just quickly say this. Um, uh, a few days ago, I was speaking to a friend of mine who, who works outside of the country, and um, she said to me that her husband, uh, they live in Ikoli, her husband uh, received palliatives from three different groups of people. He received from the government, and then he received from two organizations, I think corporate organizations. They just knocked at their door, and they delivered those palliatives. And so I said to her, I don't understand how he should be getting palliatives. And I said to her, I'm going to call up your husband and tell him to get me those palliatives, because I know those who need them. And so she said to me that the husband actually said, oh, he, would, uh, he was going to give them to the laundryman, to the, um, to the driver, and such people, such staff who work with him. Now, the import of that is this. Why would palliative be taken to Koyi? Uh, and these are people who are well, you know, who are well endowed. Uh, materially, at least, who don't need these things. And the last time I was on the show, that was what I was trying to highlight, that the distribution is not effective. The people who really need to get these things are not being reached. So that basically is a pointer to the fact that we have not done do too well in the distribution. All right, Sumbo, um, the government has um, increased the social register. Um, by 1 million, totaling 3.6 million. How has this helped so far? Well, I don't think it will bring about any appreciable help. Um, yeah, it, 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 an increase of 1 million households is something, but it's still not reaching the mark. I remember that I did say the last time that um, um, if, if the government was uh, said they were distributing to 2.6 households. Uh, in terms of numbers, in terms of population numbers, what exactly does that uh, add up to? Now, when I uh, listened to the president's speech and I had that increase to 3.6 million, I immediately did the math. So if we say that a household is made up of five persons, if you multiply that, you're going to be getting 18 million people. If you say it's seven people per household, you're going to be getting 25 million Nigerians. And if you go as high as one household, you know, take, uh, catering for 10 people, then you're talking about 36 million people. And if we say that over 100 million people still live below the poverty line, 
then you'd understand what I'm trying to say here, that it's not really meeting the mark. Well, we will say thank you to them for increasing the numbers, but they can still do more. Um, you know, I was thinking through all of this, and somehow it occurred to me that when, when I was even talking about the vulnerable people, uh, a very critical set of people that I missed out are the homeless. Uh, all over Nigeria, there are people who don't have a roof over their heads. These are very vulnerable people. You see them, you know, sleeping under the bridges. If you've ever been opportuned to go to Lagos Island, where, where we normally call it Saleko, uh, late at night, you would find people sleeping in their numbers, you know, on the verandas. Um, a couple of years back, I also uh, know that there's something they used to call tan lesse, I mean, about who owns the land, literal translation. And that's a, 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 a situation whereby people rent out, you know, uh, rooms or spaces. And um, as far back as maybe like 10 years ago, if you had 20 naira, 50 naira, you paid just to sleep there overnight. You couldn't take a bath, you couldn't do anything. And I'm sure that such places still exist. So what do you do with this kind of people? If you give them palliative in terms of raw food, they don't even have a stove, they don't have a kitchen, they don't have pots to cook. So these are the kind of people who possibly are robbing houses now because they are hungry, in, you know? And so what can we do with this set of people? My take on that was, is, you know, would be that peradventure, the government needs to organize what we call soup kitchens, okay? Where cooked food, is, you know, is, is a, a, a food is cooked, and then they have a, a delivery system whereby they take these things to those areas, high density areas, the sun, where you have these people in their numbers, and they can have, in the very least, a meal a day. Now, how do we do that? We have a number of fast food uh, organizations, companies, you know, Government cannot do this alone. That's another important thing the government needs to take away from here. They can't do this alone. They need, you know, the cooperation of several segments of the society. So let's say, for instance, they take this, uh, you know, fast food, they partner with these fast food organizations who release some of their staff, you know, as many people, you know, as needed to do the cooking, you know, and then they partner with organizations who produce things like, you know, Semovita, who produce things like wheat, you know, food stuff like that, who would supply them with these items, farms and all of that. And then they cook and you have delivery vans and you have CSOs, you know, uh, you have CDA leaders who can help to distribute, you have police escorts for security who will go along with them and they can have a meal a day. Now, remember that CSOs, there are a lot of CSOs who work in grassroots, who already work with these people, who know them, who are familiar with the terrain. There are also a number of religious organizations. I know a, a church that works in Jorabadia, you know, and I understand that even now they are feeding them or something. So we need to partner with people like this who know the ropes and make sure that such persons get at least a meal a day to alleviate their hunger. The distribution of food materials raw is okay for those who have the means to cook them. But for those who don't, we, these are the most vulnerable people that we need to reach out to. And that will be my suggestion of how to tackle this. Well, th that is uh, one of the, the, the most um, interesting thing I've heard in recent times, um, uh, looking at how we can deal with um, uh, the most vulnerable you know, in the society. Uh, but then it comes with its, it, with its challenges also. I, I was looking through uh, the news um, about three or four days ago, and I realized that what was done in South Africa was that uh, they actually brought all the homeless people uh, into a safe place. They, they, they calm them like in a stadium or like somewhere like no Nikon Stadium or like in a stadium that is not in use. They, they brought all of them on that one roof and showed that they got them all tested and government is now feeding them under that same one roof. That's what I saw happen in South Africa. Wouldn't you, couldn't you think that we could also uh, buy into such initiative? 
perfectly and exactly. I, I, I wasn't even aware of that, but you, uh, that tells you that, you know, there are several ways by which we can achieve and we can learn from others who have done it. That's a good one now, because if you bring them into a space, then it reduces the traffic that you have to do. And like I said, there are organizations that are already working with such people. They would be able to talk to them. They would be able to manage them. And so what I, I think the government needs to be doing now is to partner with such agencies, such organizations to, you know, to realize lies this goal. But the way we're going now, we're not going to be able to reach these people and we're already seeing the repercussion of it. They are, if a hungry man is an angry man. Uh, just a few moments before I came on set now, uh, my brother sent me something that somebody supposedly, an area boy, had, you know, done an audio, uh, audio uh, tape on WhatsApp in which he was saying that they were going to go out in their numbers and he was calling out to his fellow guys to go into their numbers and begin to attack the houses of the rich, the houses of the leaders. This is what you would see. Don't forget that one of the shocking news that greeted people at the onset of this uh, pandemic was people queuing up in the U.S. in front of gun shops. I remember that I think it was my daughter who was asking me and saying, Mommy, I don't understand the linkage. And I said, they are trying to get guns, you know, to secure themselves because they know that when this thing goes on for a long time, people are going to begin to break into homes. And that if that could happen in the United States and people saw it afar off, then what do you think would happen in Nigeria? I saw it off, in, you know, afar off. It was one of the things I said that if this lockdown goes on for long, people are going to begin to steal. And so government, we appeal to government to look at these things and, you know, uh, begin to implement. They need a lot of people to join in the implementation. They cannot do it alone. Asumbo, I want us to point out some challenges that probably um, we could be facing this time around. Now, we've talked about helping people who are, um, who, you know, who are homeless so they can get cooked meal. Let's talk about the challenge that we are having right now, the unrest that is going on. People are complaining that the government has said that released, um, uh, uh, what's it called, truckloads of rice that's by the, um, the customs and other palliative measures, but they are not getting it. What could be the problem? Is there, um, is there um, a, a problem in the distribution channel and the supply chain? What could be the problem here? Because we need to identify the problem so we can get a solution to it. Well, a critical problem would be logistics. Uh, like I said to you, look, if you don't know the terrain, if you don't have the information, you don't even know where to go. So I think what we see is, you know, the agencies, the people responsible for uh, these distributions, just going to the urban areas to, you know, places, uh, you know, that are accessible to them, places they know. The truth of the matter is where these people reside, a number of these people don't even have an idea where they are. And if they do, they can't even access them. Now, that's one. The second thing would be greed. You know, I, I, I would always say that the greed of the average Nigerian, it's not impossible that some of these food items have been diverted to individual homes. You know, that would be a shame for anyone to do at a time like this. But when you have a people who have lost their conscience, you know, it's to be expected. But for me, basically, the legitimate challenge will be the logistics and, you know, uh, uh, um, the knowledge of the places where these things need to go. And that's why I continue to maintain that government needs to work with the people who know these places, who, uh, who work in these places, who, you know, who, before, who worked there before the lockdown. Take, for instance, um, yesterday, a friend and neighbor of mine who knows that I do a bit of stuff with the Ogun State Government, was, she was asking me if I could help her secure a pass for Ogun State. While she lives in Arepo, she wants to go and distribute food to um, uh, the people living with uh, disabilities in Agege. Lagos State has been able to give her a pass, but she needs to move from Ogun State to Lagos State where she lives. And she, you know, she began to envisage that there could be a problem for her. 
you know, my response to her was that I shouldn't see that as a problem, but who knows? She could get on the expressway and then she stopped and, you know, something else takes over. So these are the areas that we need to look at. People want to help. People want to do stuff, but, you know, they don't have the, the, the passes to go around. They don't have the right, you know, they don't have the right organization to get these things done. And so that, for me, are the areas that we need to look at. On, on this show, uh, Sumbo, a, a few times we have advocated, or rather, some other people have also preferred the solutions for government, one of which is the fact that um, they need to work with um, local local council, local government. Uh, but that doesn't seem to, to be working. Do we, have, do we have a monitoring system in place? Uh, because it's not enough to uh, give out these truckloads of, um, of, of goodies and say, take to this local government, let them distribute. Do we have monitoring uh, uh, mechanism in place to, to ensure that um, these goodies uh, get to the people that uh, really, really need them? I, I'm not sure we do. And um, again, uh, I think that was how I closed my, uh, uh, my, uh, um, my, my words the last time I was on set with you. Um, that monitoring and, ev and evaluation is very key at a time like this and for this kind of project. Of course, we need monitoring, and that monitoring should be done by independent, uh, you know, organizations, agencies, and persons. Uh, the government cannot set out to distribute palliative, and they will be the ones to monitor that distribution by themselves. Yes, they could, you know, but it will be more effective if you have independent people who see to these things. And, you know, we have been conversing for government to work with CSOs and to work with CDAs, like you said, with local government uh, uh, authorities, also with, tra um, with traditional rulers, with religious organizations. We need to all come together and put our hands on deck to, you know, to solve this problem. And if the government begins to take, you know, the position of, oh, we can do it all, we, we, we have already begun begun to see the failures, the gaps that are there. So yes, monitoring is essential. It is essentially necessary at a time like this to show, I mean, to ensure that this distribution is being done properly and it is reaching the people who ought to have them. All right, Simbo, I want to get your take on, um, on identification because you mentioned earlier on in your statement that um, these materials might be available, but there are people living in hinterlands, living in very far places that they would not have access to. How can um, identification help this time around? Because some people are even arguing that the so-called money you want to transfer, the conditional cash transfer, why don't you get those people, put them into um, the mobile banking system and transfer the cash to them so that they can afford to buy the things that they need? How can we use identification at this point in time to help solve this challenge <laughs> unfortunately we've been on the case of identity i am um, uh the national id card for as long as i can remember now uh because that would have been a, a, a tool that would you know help identify locations of people where they live their residences and all of that but you know well, that is not working um i will still go back to the local government i will still go back to cso's who work in the grassroots. I don't think there are people that know, you know, the terrain more than CSOs who work in these grassroots. I've been privileged to go to places that in my lifetime would never have thought existed, even in Lagos State. Okay, and so, you know, these are people who have some form of data, some form of in, in, um, information that government needs to work with them. You know, again, a friend of mine, you know, spoke with me, with me a few days ago and was speaking about Isaleko and how, you know, he's some kind of, you know, community leader recognized around the place. And, you know, he, he, he was getting so many calls that, oh, God, we are hungry and all of that. So he had to organize with a few persons, you know, friends and club members and all of that. And they began to find a way of getting food to those people. So this is what I'm talking about. There are people who are on ground 
who know these people? Those are the people the government needs to work with. The government itself, I'm not sure they know the people. I'm not sure they know, you know, what is going on exactly. So my appeal, I keep saying it, is to see it is for government to work with CSOs and to work with religious organizations. I know a lot of religious organizations who have adopted, you know, slums and they work with them, they, you know, they feed them. Um, regularly, they talk to them, cancel them, and all of that. And so these are the people that government needs to partner with. I keep saying that government can't do it alone. They are close to the grassroots, they work with them, so let the government come up, you know, and partner with these people. There's so many of them, like I said, want to work, but they just don't know how to get to government. They don't know how to, you know, come on board. There's a lockdown. You can't go anywhere. I even I now just discovered that today it's a total lockdown because I also live on the border of Lagos State and Ogun State. It, it, you know, I can't go out to buy food today because it's total lockdown and I don't have any protein at home. So we have to make some, you know, we have to improvise to find something to eat. So if it's happening to the elite, if it's happening to the people who have the means, how much more those who don't? So my take on this is that government should please reach out to CSOs, reach out to religious organizations, reach out to people who work in the grassroots, and they will help, you know, with the effective distribution of this palliative. You know, one, one good thing that um, this development has raised is the need for us to have a single database. And I'm, sh I'm sure uh, uh, as we speak, I'm sure CDAs, local governments are beginning to look at that. We could even start this database um, conversation from that level. Every, every CD, every local government have a database of people in your local government. They will not take it from local government then to the states and then probably uh, to the federation. If the federal government does not want a single database, maybe the state government should be looking at having their own single database. That could be a good step in the right direction, Sumbo. I agree with you. Um, you know, whatever form of data you can lay your hands on, it helps, OK? Uh, and so, like you said, let the local government begin with communities, begin with words that are under them. Let them begin to have an idea who are people, you know, and begin to also disaggregate them into different categories to help identify the different needs. Um, you know, the vulnerable can be classified under so many, in, you know, so many by so many indices, by so many things, and so. The local government, like you said, would be a good way to start. The local government, if they have their data, can feed into the state data, and the state can now feed into the national data. And we move on from there. Data is very essential. One thing that this whole pandemic issue has been throwing up is the issue of the availability of data. You, we can't, you can't run anything without data. You can't plan a budget without data. You cannot do anything without knowing your numbers, without knowing the different categories and the different needs of the people. You can't. And that is the problem that we have as I speak. Uh, well, well, Sumbo, uh, let, let's move on from here. Uh, like you rightly alluded to, uh, there was um, a, a WhatsApp video, I mean, a WhatsApp um, voice note that went, went around. So you could see that um, uh, there is a level of um, tension that is brewing. People are getting a bit on, on rest. People are getting a bit unexcited. And then there is this fear. But it's important that we need to like calm the nerves of people of Lagos, especially uh, at the youth. Uh, so I, I would like you to make an advocacy, maybe to religious leaders, maybe to uh, uh, well-meaning Nigerians, uh, whichever way they can they can come out and assist uh, in the short term. We need, we need some short, some quick fix right now. We need some quick fix right now uh, to, to, to help um, the hungry in the state. Yeah, I, I, I do believe that um, the advocacy is not strong enough. We need to do more. However, you know, if you continue, uh, in, my, in my faith, it says faith without works is dead. Um, no matter what you say to the people, if they are hungry and you don't have any means of alleviating that hunger, what you are saying would definitely be falling on deaf ears. You know, um, and 
let us also realize that the population of Nigeria is made, you know, uh, 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 is made up more of youths. I, I know that our youths cover over 60% of our uh, population. These are people who have the energy, who have the zest. They have to channel it into something. If they don't channel it into something positive, they will channel it into something negative. They've been locked down. They can't go anywhere. You, you are not even allowed to go for a walk. You can't jog. And so how do you expend this energy? And if you add that to hunger, you, are, you have a time bomb on your hand that is waiting to explode. So advocacy, yes. Sensitization, yes. I would suggest that, you know, the local government moves through their communities, you know, carry the loudspeaker, appeal to them, talk to them. But in addition, something definite has to be done with the hunger that is going on. They need to feed. So advocacy, yes, but please let's join it, you know, with some palliative that is meaningful and that would um, actually arrest the hunger that this category of persons uh, are beginning to feel. Well, Sunbo, um, I mean, the insights you give has been tremendous. I, I do hope um, the government and everybody else who is responsible for ensuring these palliatives get to the right people, do what they should do, and stop politicizing with it as, as well, um, so the nation can have um, peace and safety while we battle this COVID-19. David? Yes, yeah, Sunbo, thank you so very much for talking to us. We'll, we'll, come, we'll come to you again when the need arises. Sumbo or Ladibo, yes. she is a, a development consultant. Thank you for talking to us on the show, Sumbo. Thank you once again for having me. Do have a lovely day and stay safe. Thank you. You too. You too. Yeah. So, so, you know, while, while Sumbo was talking, I was just thinking, uh, like when I asked her that we need quick fix right now, given to the operas that we're hearing and the, the, the fear that is building, yeah. it wouldn't be out of place if government at this point in time, like she actually suggested, at this point in time, I mean, as we speak right now, um, you know, give instructions, give, give out some um, uh, monetary instructions and say, um, X, Y, Z, take food to this place, ready-made food to where we're having this um, chaos and this um, tension growing. Take food to, to gentlemen there. Give them food. Give them enough food that will probably last them for the whole of today. That would calm some nerves. Absolutely. I agree with you, David. It is not out of place to ensure the food gets there. But the problem is, according to what Sumbo said, is monitoring. Yes. I heard in some quarters, in some quarters, that a particular local, um, a particular um, 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 leader in a particular constituency gave out certain palliative um, materials to people, you know, to a certain um, uh, person to say, okay, distribute it among those people. But guess what? The person took out half of it, kept it, watered down the remaining ones and began to share it. And so there was an unrest. Yeah. Youths came out screaming, fighting. Why would you give us this? You're supposed to give us, let's say, you're supposed to give us one dairy cow of rice. But what we are getting now is one milk cup of rice and one pack of noodles. Why are we getting this? Are we, are we thieves? Are we hungry or what? Why are you giving this to us? And so the news got to the person that this is what we are giving to the people. Why is it like this? The person said, no. If I, I give them 150 bags of rice, but they are getting just 25, why? What's going on? So there's a problem there. And this That's is the, the reason why the we grid, need to have the monitoring. Factor, the grid factor there, the grid factor. I mean, it, it, developments have shown over time that um, quite a number of Nigerians are very, very heartless. I mean, it's, it's, really, it's, really it's, I think they should make it punishable. It should become criminal for you to pick something that's supposed to be for the good of a society and you're keeping it for yourself. I mean, what, what, are, what are you yeah, thinking the, about? The bigger picture, the bigger picture, there's a bigger picture to all of that. Uh, let's not even go into that. Uh, but um, let's take this quick break. Uh, when we come back, our conversations will begin, will continue rather. Um, stay with us. Say something, we'll say no.